Welcome to the Battle of the Year. Oh. Thanks. So this year, it's going to be a bad fight. It's going to be the champion, Jomla 2.5, versus the newcomer, the challenger. It's Jomla 3.1. So if there are some people in the audience who are not being able to see violence and blood, please take the opportunity just to get out and it's 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 not yeah that can can be bad because actually there have been a lot of rumors going around so brother fighting against brother if it should be really done if it should be broadcast in any way but uh, yeah the public demanded it so it's gonna happen so in the red corner we're gonna have now Bulldog 3.1 the challenger with also already 1.7% of all Jomla installations. Um, it's out since April, so not very much. It's got a fighting weight of 8.4 megabytes, and also already out with about 3,016 ex extensions. Now, let's go to the reigning champion. In the blue corner, we got Stone Solid Jomla 2.5. It's got a widespread, it's about 34% of all Jomla installations worldwide. It's out since a very long time. It's a very experienced fighter. So since January 2012, it's a little bit wider, maybe a little bit quicker. We do not know yet. Uh, so the weight is 2.9 megabytes, and it's with a mind-blowing number of extensions, about 6,500. Uh, so let's compare the both competitors next to each other. Uh, if it goes for uh, more installation, the point goes to the reigning champion. Uh, but because New fighters always tend to be a little bit more aggressive, do more for the training. So we might expect a small edge coming from Bulldog 3-1. So with the weight, we skip that. But the clear point within just sheer number of extensions, we'll have to go to the champion, Jumla Stone Solid 2.5. So but what would be a boxing match without training? So first, we'll just see how both did in their training. So we just installed a fresh 2.5, 11, and also 3.1. We took typeface, a typeface template from Frill over there. <laughs> it's so nice to see you blush. <laughs> um, because basically it runs on both systems very smoothly. That's the reason why I took it. <coughs> and also I did demo content and images. I'll be searching around if there would be some industry standard just to test out content management systems. Um, there's not. So I took a couple of articles from Wikipedia. I took in a couple of articles from the t uh, demo content from 2.5 and just uh, hot typed it together and just set up new content, new navigation. Um, did not make much sense, but it was something to test on. And I run, um, I did not do a migration from 2.5 to 3 uh, because I did not want to have something happen during migration process which might, uh, yeah, say, say that this would not be a fair fight, so I just manually copied the whole thing to the 3.1 version, so just to get rid of it. Now, the ring. You know, the ring is always very important. It has to be a certain size, so know that both would uh, have equal possibilities and chances to win. So I took the typeface uh, uh, template, as I told from your strap. You see there the pretty version, mine doesn't look so, look so good, but I got funnier pictures. Um, then I took a MAM Pro server to test everything locally. So I did not want to have to worry about internet connection speed, not being able to compare things, and 
so it's it's not that much about server performance thing it's it's more just how do these both opponents perform or beat them up um, I all tested the thing on the small computer I had here um, so let's get on to the ring facts so I used a recent Apache server normal Apache 2 handler I used a uh, 5.4.10 PHP version cache off and I just use out of the box recent MySQL database and UTF-8 as general standard for characters. Let's come to the judge. We have their JMeter. Anyone familiar with JMeter, Apache JMeter? Okay, uh, last year I did a performance testing just for 2.5 and I used Apache Benchmark and it was nice for seeing how things uh, really uh, performed but it did not have all the things that I really wanted to see and I wanted to test. So um, Apache JMeter is far more configurable and so you can really actually uh, do a better real life testing. So uh, to be uh, able to compare them and to have also something a little bit more realistic approach to compare them I had to get myself into working with JMeter, which is actually very good. And if somebody wants to do some testing for themselves, um, that's the way to go. To set up the rules. So no biting, no spitting. And actually, I wanted to do a real life scenario. Uh, real life scenario at this um, point means that more prominent and dominant content will be clicked on more often than something just further way down back on the page. Um, and all I wanted all requests to be made. So not just the normal um, HTML requests getting back, I also wanted to have requests for CSS, JavaScript, and images. And I wanted to have them all. And that's the reason why I took JMeter to test it out. Now, what you're about to see is not very pretty. It's just for testing purposes. So I have here the just general homepage. I got some funny images, and I just told myself, okay, uh, people tend to fall, especially at the J and beyond, uh, for alcohol. So I just put it there, some of my bourbon collections. And so I thought, oh, people would click that very often. So I said, okay, about seven more people would just go then from there to see that so template page. And I said. Okay, the next one, we have a nice red fruit. People go for red fruits. It looks interesting, uh, so a little bit less people would go there. Then something I'd just like to do, uh, just uh, freedom of speech. So I said people would also fall for this. Then we're going to the less important content. Uh, contact form, I said, okay, it would be nice if somebody would contact us for doing all this stuff. And also I have just a category list view so I uh, took there all the Wikipedia articles. And I said, okay, at least one article will be clicked and that'll be the internet. And as you can see here on the path, I took some article which should be way, way back in navigation just to have it there. So altogether, these build up um, kind of visitor flow as you also know from Google Analytics and altogether, there are th uh, 31 web page requests. And also with all this stuff. So I said, okay, we set up 10 users doing all these requests. I got a ramp up period of one second. This means not uh, everything starts at the very same time. Just have a little spacing, so I did not want to smoke out the server. It was not about this. I wanted to see how they perform. And what I did, uh, one loop is, like I said before, th uh, 31 full web page requests with all the stuff that will be triggered. And I also did 10 loops for one testing for the first three rounds at least. 
and it'll be about uh, three uh, three thousand one hundred full web pages for one test turn. I also tested both versions with the same schedule at the same time. So even if I had slight performance issues, uh, both versions would have been affected the same way. So as you compare them, uh, we have in our uh, small thing there, does anybody see the difference? Anybody? Raise hands. Uh, yeah, we got a 3 here and we got a 2.5 here. So actually, um, both versions look the same. So let's go to the weighting. So just put the facts here. We got our HTTP request. We got 18. Here we got 16. Uh, wait a second. 18 requests, 16 requests. Um, yeah, this is happens because the template normally disables the loading of Mo tools if you disable front end editing. Because I did not um, need it, I just said disable it. Nobody will enter uh, some content from the front end, so I can get rid of Mo tools and have a little less size. Unfortunately, the same does not really work with the 3.1, so it, it additionally works Mool tools. But do not worry about it. We do the first three rounds normal with this setting, and then we send both components back to the gym and a diet just to get in real shape for the round that counts. So uh, as we can see here, we also got very high page load. Uh, five, uh, five, 520k for the front page is, in my opinion, just too much. Also, uh, the reigning champion doesn't perform very much better with 420. Um, but okay, just both opponents are ready. Slide edge goes to the champion. So, no first round, no caching, playing out of the box, nothing box. So we see average of 906 milliseconds. So I always use the average of all requests to see how they performed. Uh, so just to make it simple. Um, see? Oh, okay. We see also difference 12 milliseconds. Not too much, but um, I guess if you're counting the points, the round goes to the newcomer, Bulldog 3-1. Next one, conservative caching. As one expected, it goes far better. So uh, we lost uh, some of the unnecessary seconds. We got uh, six, uh, um, 640 milliseconds. Quite an improvement. Let's see. OK. Still 11 milliseconds difference. Ro uh, round goes very, very slightly, but it has to go to the 3 1. Now we use progressive caching, which works better in most cases. So we even got an improvement here. Uh, I think it's something about um, 20 milliseconds, but still it goes to the newcomer. But Okay, we got the red point there, but that really doesn't count because it's not a real uh, scenario. If you do a web page, you just optimize it a little bit for speed, at least if the customer pays it. Um, so right now, we got getting in shape. Uh, we were very happy to have a diet coach X3 extra for that fight, which is called Y Slow. Uh, please raise hands. Anybody knows who's what's Y Slow? Okay, then I uh, can go a little bit faster from this. So basically, it tells you, uh, like the name says, what makes your page slow. You got a nice rating. If you get an A there, this is very nice. This is cool. If you got something below C, you just should really do something about it. It just gives you basic stats, what files are being loaded, how heavy they are, and how many of them. 
It also makes them colorful for the people who likes pictures and gives also some nice tools to your hands to improve the general performance. Um, actually, tools I used for this were um, Um, I merged all CSS into one files, so we had, we had something as I think four CSS files, five CSS files to start with. I just put them all in one, put it together, merged it, uploaded it. I did the same thing with the JavaScript, so I took jQuery and um, Bootstrap JS, put it into one file, minified it, uploaded, and also I optimized the images. Um, I really like Smash It as a service. Uh, I think it's been by introduced by Yahoo, I guess, and it's a lossless um, optimization of images. So um, I tried it out, and I always thought I could do it better myself. Now I can't. This is far easier. Just a small tip: if you do not have too many images on the site, just set uh, uh, just set up a demo site. We have all your images, a demo page where you have all your images in there. Just redirect it to smash it, and it'll just see which uh, images can be compressed further. And you can download this as a zip file with the exact order of uh, your directories. So you just can unzip them locally and just push them back on the server, and you've got less case size. Um, I uh, edited the templates. I'm very sorry, I did nothing fancy. I just commented out, I just hard coded it, take that file. Um, just to be sure everything would be working fine. And uh, because I already loaded it at the top with the merge JS file, I disabled a uh, loading of Bootstrap JS at the bottom. Um, I installed a JS CSS control to kill MooTools JS uh, in the 3.1 version. So um, if somebody's interested in it, uh, just check out that uh, little plugin. I'll be having it later on also as a URL. If it's from Victor Vogel, a German developer. And it's, re it's really nice. It uses regular expression to cut out CSS or JavaScript files. Uh, just a small, tiny hint, so you will not get hurt. It uses regular expressions. This means please take the whole path to, for example, system.js, because otherwise you'll just may discover that this file had been used by multiple components, and maybe some of them you would like to work and some not. And for that kind of reason, just take the whole path. So, so we got a diet coach managing it all, and so. Now we got the gym. So we got training a little bit. And what I did, uh, I, I used uh, Multiflate. I gzipped all the files that will be good compressible. This means JavaScript, um, CSS files, uh, normal HTML, and also fonts. I used the Far Future Expire Setters for also the usual suspects. So basically for files that will be not changed very often. Be careful if you use that technique for normal um, style sheet files. Please put a, 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 a tag or number on it. So if you upload something and do something new, that not an old version will be used by the browser. Um, what I found out, I had problems setting the EE tag right. It did not really work for me very well and if, if I manually try to do something. So what worked for me, I just said, uh, file EA tag none, and it worked for me. So if you've got problems configuring it, it does make problem. You may want to try out this. It doesn't have to work, and I know other people from, how do you call it, um, other organizations, they are really, really heavily uh, uh, rely on EA tag optimization, but this would be too far-fetched right now. So comparison, before and after. Let's see how we did. So we lost seven HTTP requests, which were not necessary. Diet was really successful. We lost about three, uh, 320 kilobytes of unnecessary cache. Um, 
minus R, so I say about 12K, just the HTML file, JavaScript file tremendously, especially if you count in the 3.1 version with modules. Um, CSS file greatly reduced, CSS images, and also we got minus uh, yeah, 6 uh, 6K doing the optimization for the images. So it's just a little bit if you do image optimization, but it's really, it's a lossless, um, loss, a lossless optimization. So just use it. It'll make it a little faster for some. And even did some saving on the fab icon. So with reduced HTTP requests, both versions, versions 3.5 um, and 3.1, achieved a wide slow score of a A to also with 95%. We would have had a higher rating there for the percentage, but it's an A and this is okay. Higher rating you would only get if you just uh, do not um, resize images. And this is what Bootstrap normally relies heavily upon, which also saves you a lot of time. But if you got a performance score like this, in most of the cases, this is okay. I know, Seth, you would argue maybe differently, but some of us yeah, there, you just um, just have to get stuff done, so. <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> so this, this is okay for t testing purposes right now. Are you ready? Okay, let's see. Now we got max out performance. We got progressive caching, HTTP optimization and a little server-sided tuning. We got 600 milliseconds for 2.5. And actually, for that one, I did not just do one loop. I think I did something about three loops. This makes 9,300 uh, 9, requests and just built the average from this. So just to be sure that it would be something to be reliable on. And we see the new version performs better. So we have to get the last final round to the new version. So winner by judge decision is the 3.1. It's not a knockout, but still it's a win. So it, the victory goes to Bulldog 3.1. If you want to migrate from 2.5, and the extension do not oppose it, you can really go for it. Uh, might be even a uh, performance increase for you. And if you do a new project, just start with a new version. So the extensions I used was uh, Joelstrap with his uh, typeface template. And also I got um, Kubik Rubik uh, JS CSS control. And if you do some testing, they got a neat little plugin, which is called a uh, quick cache cleaning. It's basically something you have in the status bar and you can click on, which says clean the cache and it works very quickly before you do a new testing round. So now it's your turn. Questions? Yeah. I think this this is uh, due if you use more um, some extensions do not really work that well together with the progressive caching if some modules for example that you'd be loading so in this kind of cases uh, you may if, if if it doesn't work out the progressive caching uh, just go back to the normal caching and should be fine but with a very very simple page like this. Uh, uh, I th thought it would always be better if you do uh, just the progressive caching. But you can try it out. If something that does not work, just get a step back and see if it works. Uh, just normal testing thing. Yes, Seth. Just one observation on this. Uh, I always combine my mind with JS, right? So yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, if 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 you if you if you, if you uh, yeah, right. Um, just um, to to have it on the tape, Seth. Uh, so Seth just said that normally he would use uh, just uh, jQuery, for example, from Google. Yeah, you mean you loaded loading it from Google? So because it may be already primed in the uh, bra uh, browser cache. Uh, yes, uh, I would I, 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 I would certainly agree because also you, you get more uh, HTTP requests from different sites, so it normally performs faster. But if I use external files in a testing scenario like this, I get a lot of errors, and this is the reason why I, I merged it. Yeah. We could introduce the Joomla controller in this case here as well. So what you're yeah. Yes, uh, um, depends. You, you do not kno really know which site had been visited by the person coming to your page. So it, it, it's a little gamble, but it's a small gamble. So just uh, try it out, what works for your best. I oh know, it's just. Somebody, yeah, Kevin. I guess it really very very. Uh, so, uh, Kevin just asked how much time consuming is the migration from 2.5 to 3 version, and I wish I really could tell you, but you have to see on a project basis because it really heavily de um, depends on the extensions that you use. If you're going pretty much out of the box, it should be working very finely. Um, there's a great extension out there. It's called Akiba Backup. It had been mentioned one time earlier. <laughs> um, and so uh, I, I think something it's something with an A with a key uh, got a lot of ease in it. And uh, yeah, and he's got a very, very, very talented programmer who's doing this. He'd be very patient to answer the same <laughs> questions again. Yeah? Yeah. Please do not tell him. You kill me. Um, so just do do a backup, just test it on a local p uh, server, do a migration, and if it works out, just go for it. So this is a simple thing. And if, y if you try that, normally it takes just about an hour to do that. Yeah? If you've got a smaller site, it, it's even far quicker. I think um, if, if, if you've got the three-point site running, then most of the time will be just testing if there's not really something hidden anywhere. So um, just do a quick case study and then decide. Please. Okay. Not 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 quite. This is um, you see, uh, if something can go wrong, it will most probably go wrong. And the thing the thing is, you cannot be sure that the browser will be understanding multiflate or GZIP files. So actually you cannot. So this means if you got somebody working behind a proxy or someone uh, some of them will just not take the gzip file. And for these poor bastards, it's quite nice to have at least a small thing to being delivered to them. Yeah. So, uh, if I, uh, I just did this backup, and then got the things already unified, so I uh, did that as well. Yes, okay, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're using two, um, two files, then this works for me in this case, in this kind of scenario, I just merge it into one side files. But this is, um, you have to see this from case to case. Yeah. So this is just not the, the general be truth out there that will save us from all four slow web pages. It may vary from case to case. So, anything else? Uh, yeah, please. I I didn't 
Ah, um, well, uh, the, the question is if I compare it also with performance speed um, on Drupal, WordPress, Typo 3 versus Jumba, and I tell you I did not. Um, the problem is this would be a major effort and would just take a little bit too much time that I do not have at the moment. And it has to be a test scenario that would be fair for all of the systems. We would need a template that be working on all these different kinds of systems and we would also need the same content and the same navigation being working on the same systems. And it has to be so exact that you really could not tell fr as from a visitor's point of perspective if it's a Drupal, if it's a Joomla, if it's a WordPress, it's a Typo 3. And uh, my wife wanted to go with me on vacation <laughs> after Jam Beyond. And if I would have told her how long I estimated the time of, uh, yeah, most probably I would not be alive. <laughs> so, uh, but it's a good question I ask myself this, especially when I wanted to find demo content and navigation being comparable so I could see it on different versions uh, or, or CMS versions. It's a very good question. It interests me, but it's very time consuming. And I'm, I'm not a pro for Type of 3, for example. And it would be unfair if I set up something on Type of 3 and just benchmark it against Joomla. Because I, I, kn I know how Joomla works. Um, I get along with it. And I do not do this necessarily with other systems. So it would be unfair. and. Uh, so we might do this, but then we would need also pros from the other system who would just be willing to take the pain just to make something just look all over the same and uh, to just test it. You're married too? Yes. Ah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, time's about over. At least this one tells me. Any more? Okay, then we just say thank you very much for your patience. And we just can say now, okay, just go on with the three version. You'll be fine. Thank you very much.